I'm Kirstine. Welcome to Book Talk. Today we are discussing the much anticipated I Was Here by Gail Foreman. If you don't know what this is about, it's a girl and she finds out her best friend has committed suicide. And she hasn't been in much contact with her for the last half of a year because it's their first year at college so they've been separated. But it was her best friend and she didn't have any idea that her best friend was having suicidal thoughts. There were no signs that allowed her to believe that she would ever do something like this. So the book follows Cody, the best friend that didn't commit suicide. And she's trying to figure out what happened to her best friend May. Did she actually commit suicide? Was there's more to it? What went wrong? And we follow Cody on that journey. She goes back to, you know, where Meg was living. She talks to her friends. She's trying to figure it out. That's all I can really say without spoiling anything. I found the whole first half really exciting in a dark way, but kind of like we wanted to know what happened. And then as we find out what happened, you know, it's obviously sad. You know from the premise that it's not going to be a really happy book. <laughs> the writing was great. It felt really real. They feel like people that you would see and hear about in real life. I don't really have that much to say about the book because it's one of those books that I just read and took in. And I feel like I learned things I've seen through people's eyes that I haven't really seen through before. I'm really glad I read it because I usually wouldn't pick up a book with this synopsis because it sounds sad, but it was Gail Foreman, so you know. It definitely delves a lot into suicide and why people commit suicide and some really dark topics. And they were really interesting to read about but also sad. It was just really interesting and eye-opening. That's it for the non-spoiler section, so if you haven't read it, I'm gonna ask you to leave. So bye non-spoiler people, bye. So I went into it super optimistic that Meg wasn't dead or that Meg didn't kill herself. I just didn't want to believe it because it's sad and depressing and sad. The whole time I'm really rooting for Meg didn't actually kill herself or that someone murdered Meg and she was on this journey and she was gonna figure out who it was and get him and get him put in jail for what he did to her best friend. And there were little clues and stuff like she didn't send a letter to her brother. That says something because, you know, maybe the person who killed her didn't know about her brother. Or the fact that the letter was emailed, you know, it's not written, it's not said from her own mouth. Anyone could have hacked her computer and emailed that I was like, yes, clue, clue, clue. She, she didn't commit suicide, it didn't happen. It was a fake body, blah, 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 blah. Someone else did it. But in the end, we learned that she was actually dealing with depression and that's something that I feel like I learned a lot about by reading this book. Like I've never really thought about depression in terms of it being a disease, which it is. And I've never really learned about it. I've never really heard anyone speak about it who's dealt with it. The whole thing about Meg sleeping all the time and how she had mono in seventh grade for a long time. Like I was like, that's weird that she had such a bad case of mono that it would go on till college. But like, I didn't pick up that it was actually one of the symptoms of depression. At the end, I was just as taken off guard as Meg was, even though her mom had been dealing with depression. Like, we know that Meg's mom has had battles with mental illness. I was so sad when Meg's parents came out to Cody and were like, Meg has been dealing with severe depression. And I wish, I wish so much that she had told Cody, or at least that Meg's parents had told Cody. Like, I, at the end when she was like, I didn't know, I didn't know. And I was like, I know. And I, it's so upsetting that she didn't know. I was upset with Meg's parents. Like, they should have said something to Cody or at least said something now that Meg is dead. So Cody's not wondering, like, why would Meg do this? Like, she had no idea. Ben eventually grew on me. I love how Cody and her mom kind of reconnect at the end of the book. At the end, when she calls her mom and tells her she needs help, she needs to be picked up, and her mom was like, don't worry, we'll candle it, I'm gonna get you a flight out of there, don't worry about it. I was in tears. The relationships felt so real. I was just so happy to see them lean on each other, come together again, kind of understand each other, and show that they understand each other, communicate, because they don't communicate much throughout the story. And when she was going to find the man that was messaging her, that was scary. That was horrifying. Like, I thought it was going to be way more dramatic than it was. But again, it was like really real in the fact that it wasn't. It wasn't someone out to get Meg. It was a random person on the internet. The book kind of left me emotionally exhausted. I was really hoping for all this thriller, police, CSI, Sherlock Holmes stuff, and I just got sad feelings. I'd love to hear what you thought of the story. I mean, in terms of my Gail Foreman rating system, it goes just one day, if I stay, and then I was here. Please share your thoughts. I'm Christine. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye!